All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is the Feast of Purim. Okay, pay close attention. I'm going to be going over the lesson rather quickly. I'm going to be touching on prophetic things. So pay close attention. All right. Uh, let's open up with the book of Esther, chapter 11, verse 2. Let's start there. Esther, chapter 11, and verse 2. Esther, chapter 11, verse 2. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great, in the first day of the month Nisan, Mordecai, the son of Jairus, the son of Semei, the son of Kisai, of the tribe of Benjamin, had a dream. So now, our forefather Mordecai of the tribe of Benjamin, he's having a dream in the second year of Artaxerxes the Great. Artaxerxes the Great is Xerxes the First. Artaxerxes the Great is also called Xerxes the First. Okay, watch this. Let me share my screen real quick so we can get a bit of history. Okay, read that. Xerxes the First. Xerxes the First, reading from wikipedia.org. Xerxes the First, old Persian, commonly known as Xerxes the Great, mm -hmm. was the fourth king of kings of the Achaemenid, Achaemenid Empire. Of the Achaemenid Empire, ruling from 486 to 465 BC. So Xerxes the first, which is after Xerxes the Great, he ruled from 486 to 465 BC. Go ahead. He was the son and successor of Darius the Great, mm, 522 to 486 BC. And his Come mother on. was Atossa, a daughter of Cyrus the Great, mm -hmm. the founder Great. of the Achaemenid Empire. Come like on. his father, he ruled the empire at its territorial apex. Meaning what? He ruled the empire when the empire was his what? At its apex, when it was doing extremely well. That's when he took the throne. Go ahead. He ruled from 486 BC until his assassination in 465 BC at the hands of Atabernas, the commander of the royal bodyguard. Now watch this. Now read that part right there. We're going to read that. Xerxes, come on. Xerxes is identified with the king Ahasuerus in the biblical book of Esther. Xerxes is Ahasuerus in the book of Esther. Esther 1 and 1, when we read that, Xerxes, the Xerxes the first, or utter Xerxes the great. Okay, read the part again. Xerxes is identified with the king Ahasuerus in the biblical book of Esther. Mm -hmm which some scholars consider to be historical romance. They are talking nonsense. They, it's not a historical romance. This is biblical fact. It's a biblical fact. Okay. Now let's go back. Esther chapter 11, read verse 2 again. Esther chapter 11, verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great, in the first day of the month Nisan, Mordecai, the son of Jairus, the son of Semei, the son of Kisai, of the tribe of Benjamin, had a dream. So Mordecai's forefather had a dream. Okay, go ahead. Who was a Jew and dwelt in the city you know of what? Susa. Hmm. Before we get there, read verse 2 again. Read verse 2 again. I just want to touch on something. Come on. The book of Esther, chapter 11, verse 2. Great. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great, in the mm -hmm. first day of the month Nisan, which month Mordecai, month? in the first day of the month Nisan. In the first day of the month Nisan. In the first day of the month Nisan. Okay, give me the book of Esther 3, verse 7. Esther. Esther chapter 3 and verse 7. Okay, let's find out when is the month Nisan. All right, Esther 3, verse 7. Let's get that. Esther chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan in the, the 12th month. year. The first month is the month Nisan. That's the first month. That's what we call today January. The first month is called the month Nisan. Go ahead. That is the month Nisan in the 12th year mm -hmm. of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pu, that is the Lord before Haman from day to day. And from month to month, 
to the 12th month, that is the month Adar. Okay, read verse 7 again. Come on. Esther chapter 3, verse 7. In okay. the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the 12th year of King of Osiris, they cast pure, that is the lot, before Haman mm -hmm. from day to day and from month to month to the 12th month, that is the month Adar. So the 12th month is the month Adar. So the first month is month Nisan. The 12th month is month Adar. So in the world, when they say there's 12 months in the year, they get it from the Bible. You understand? They get it from the Holy Bible. Understand that? Okay. Now let's go back. Esther chapter 11. Read verse 2 now. Come on again. Esther chapter 11 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great, in the first day of the month Nisan, Mordecai, the son of Jairus, the son of Samei, the son of Kisai, of the tribe of Benjamin, had a dream. So now he had a dream in the first month of the year, which is Nisan. Go ahead. Who was a Jew and dwelt in the city of Susa, a great man, being a servitor in the king's court. So our forefather Mordecai was a servitor in the king's court. So he was serving in the king's palace. Give me Esther 12 verse 1. Okay. Esther 12 verse 1. Come on. Esther chapter 12 verse 1. Great. Right. And Mordecai took his rest in the court with Gabatha and Tara, the two eunuchs of the king and keepers of the palace. You see that thing? So Mordecai was working with these, with these men, Gabatha and Tara, the two eunuchs of the king and keepers of the palace. So that's why it says being a servitor in the king's court. Okay, go back. Esther chapter 11, read verse 4 now. Esther chapter 11, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He was also one of the captives, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, carried from Jerusalem, which with Jeconias, king of Judea, and this was his dream. With Jeconias, Jeconias, king of Judea, and this was his dream. So our forefather Mordecai was kept, was taken into captivity from the time of what? Babylon. When Babylon came to take over the kingdom of Judah, guess what? Mordecai was one of them, was one of the people that was carried into Babylon. Give me the book of 2 Kings 24 verse 6. Let's get some history on that. Just this during the time of Jeconias. Jeconiah, when Jeconiah was the king of Judea, that's when Nebuchadnezzar came to carry Israel, like Israel into Babylon. When that happened, Mordecai was one of the people that was taken into captivity by Babylon. Okay? Second Kings chapter 24, verse 6. Read that. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 6. Mm -hmm. So Joachim slept with his fathers, and Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. So he had Joachim, it says Joachim slept with his father. He died. And Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. Now the son has taken the throne now. Jump down to verse 8. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Joachim was 18 years old when he began to reign. Really? And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. So now Jaquin is as he was 18 years old when he began to reign, right? So now Jaquin, remember what we read in, in Esther, it says Jeconias. All that, give me the book of Baruch, okay? Baruch chapter 1, verse 2. Baruch 1, verse 2. Let's see who is Jaquin, okay? Baruch 1, verse 2. Let's get there. Baruch chapter 1 and verse 2. Baruch chapter 1, verse 2. Go ahead. In the fifth year and in the seventh day of the month, mm -hmm. what time as the Chaldeans took Jerusalem and bent it with fire? The Chaldeans, that's Nebuchadnezzar. Give me the book of Ezra real quick. Ezra chapter 5. Okay. Give me Ezra. Ezra 5. Read verse 12. Ezra chapter 5, verse 12. But after that, our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath. He mm -hmm. gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean. The what? The Chaldean. 
So we were given into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean. Go ahead. Who destroyed this house and carried mm -hmm. the people away into Babylon. So the Chaldeans goes into Babylon. So go back to Baruch now, chapter 1, verse 2 again. Baruch chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the fifth year and in the seventh day of the month, what time as the Chaldeans took Jerusalem and burnt with fire? Come on. And Baruch did read the words of this book in the hearing of Jeconias, the son of Joachim, king of Judah, mm -hmm. and in the ears of all the people that came to hear the book. You see that part right there? So when our forefather Baruch read the words of Jeremiah before Jeconias, Jeconias is Jachim. You understand? The son of Jachim. It is the son of Jachim, king of Judah, in the ears of all the people that came to hear the book. So Jeconias is Jachim that we read about in 2 Kings 24 verse 8. Go back to 2 Kings 24 verse 8 again. 2 Kings chapter 24 verse 8. Go ahead. Jachin was 18 years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. Really? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. Now we're gonna re now, now we're gonna get the reason why he ended up in Babylon. And all the people of oh, most of the people of Judah, you know, the princes and the nobles and so forth, why they went into captivity because he was evil as hell. Okay, go ahead. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. The city was besieged. Jump down to verse 12. Come on. Verse 12. And Joachim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. So now Joachim is taken into Babylon. They took his mother, his servants, the princes, and the officers. They were carried into Babylon. Jump down to verse 14. Come on. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 14. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of Vela, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths. None mm -hmm. remained, save the poorest sort of the people of the land. So now our forefather Mordecai was part of this bunch that we're reading about in verse 14. You understand? The princes, the mighty men, the mighty men of Vela, you understand? The craftsmen, the smiths, our forefather Mordecai was part of this bunch. He was he went into captivity under the Babylonians during the time when Jeconias was the king, which is who Jachin. Okay, so go back to Esther chapter eleven. Okay, Esther chapter eleven. Read verse four again. Esther chapter eleven, verse four. He was also one of the captives which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, carried from Jerusalem with Je Jeconias, king of Judea. And this was his dream. Now we're going to find out the dream that our forefather Mordecai had. You know? Come on. Behold, a noise of a tumult with thunder and earthquakes and uproar in the land. Really? And behold, two great dragons came forth ready to fight, and their cry was great. So now this dream is says they get the noise of a, or the noise of a tumult, meaning an angry gathering. You understand? It says, "Behold, two great dragons came forth ready to fight, and their cry was great." Meaning they made a lot of noise, they caused a lot of havoc. You understand? In the Persian Empire, you understand? That's why it says their cry was great. Go ahead. And at their cry, all nations were prepared to battle, that mm -hmm. they might fight against the righteous people. That they may fight against the children of Israel. Read. And lo, a day of darkness and obscurity, tribulation and anguish, affliction and great uproar upon the earth. Upon the earth, because at that time, Persia was the superpower. Read. And the whole righteous nation was troubled, fearing their own evils, and were ready mm -hmm. to perish. Go ahead. Meaning what? They're about to die because of what was going on in Persia, because of these two great dragons that was ready to fight and their cry was great, right? 
Then they cried unto God, and upon their cry, as it were from a little fountain, was made a great flood, even much water. Wait. The light and the sun rose up, and the lowly were exalted and devoured the glorious. So now what we're reading here is two things are going on here. You've got two great dragons, which we're going to find out who they are. We're going to find out the little fountain which became a great flood. That's what this chapter is about. That's what the Feast of Purim is about. So here it's written in parable form. Okay, go ahead. Now when Mordecai, who had seen this dream and what God had determined to do was awake, he bared his dream in mind and until night by all means was desirous to know it. So he was desirous to know what the dream means so he can prepare himself. So jump up to verse, um, jump up to verse 10 now. Jump up to verse 10. Read verse 10. Esther chapter 11 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Then they cried unto God and upon their cry, as it were from a little fountain, was made a great flood, even much water. So now we're going to find out who this little fountain which became a great flood. Read on. The light and the sun rose up and the lowly were exalted and devoured the glorious. You see that thing? The lowly was exalted and devoured the glorious. Now watch this. Now let's dig into this thing. Give me the book of Esther 1 and 1. Okay. Esther chapter 1 and verse 1. We're gonna exp we're gonna find out who is the the little fountain which became a flood. You understand? Even much water, and the light and the sun rose up, and the lowly were exalted and devoured the glorious. Read that Esther one and one. Come on. Esther chapter one verse one. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass in the days of our series. This is our series which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over in hundred and seven and twenty provinces. So now this Ahasuerus, this is Xerxes the first, or Artaxerxes the great, okay, 486 BC and on on down. Go ahead. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace. Right. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. So now in the third year of his reign, he declared a feast. You understand this? Ah, Soros, now he declared a feast, okay, through all his provinces. Jump down to verse five. Esther chapter one, verse five. Mm -hmm. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So now it says, when the days were expired, it says the king made a feast unto all the people. Remember, they still continue the feast in Shushan the palace, both great and small. This is both great nation and small nations came. You understand? Because he held a feast, a great feast. Jump down to verse 9. Okay, come on. Esther chapter 1 verse 9. Also, Vasti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. So now you've got the queen of Persia, Vashti, okay? While the king was, he made a feast for the 127 provinces that he ruled over. Vashti, the queen, also made a feast for the women. Okay, go ahead. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehumen, Bista, Habona, Bixa, and Abasa, Zetha, and Karkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of our Cyrus the king. So these seven chamberlains, these were what? These were, these went into um, the people that eventually were going to be, but this is part of, this is part of his council. But these were the chamberlains, number one. And they were royalty, you understand? They were royalty. But I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen next. Keep reading. To bring Vesti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. So Vashti was a beautiful woman. You understand? Was a beautiful East Indian woman. So now he sent the chamberlain and said, "Listen, go in there and fetch Vashti, Vashti the queen." You understand? Because the king now is what he says he was merry with wine, because he had a feast. Okay. Well, go ahead. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Hmm. Therefore, 
was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. Because now, I mean, this is disrespect. He sends his seven chamberlains to go in there and fetch the queen. The queen is refusing. The only reason why the queen was able to have a feast for the women was because of the king. He is the ruler of Persia. But Vesti the queen, she forgot. She thought she was the king. Okay, go ahead. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so mm -hmm. was the king's manner toward all that new law and judgment. So now it says the king said to the wise men, his counselors now, you understand, which knew the times. They understood time, justice, and judgment. They understood that thing. That's why when you look at the East Indians today, a lot of them, when they come to South Africa, they become, they act like white people. The way they, they see the women, the way they dress, they start wearing pants, you understand? So the men are, the men are completely disrespected by the women. It's the same thing. These Ishmaelite women, they leave Saudi Arabia, they go to the Americas. They leave Saudi Arabia, they come to South Africa. They already start wearing, they start putting on jeans, you understand? Yeah, they cover their heads, but they're wearing jeans because they are Hellenized, you understand, the mindset. So this right here, you're seeing the pop-off of feminism. This is the pop-off of feminism. It happened already in Genesis, obviously, but here is that spirit, that same spirit is continuing. Okay? Now jump down to verse 16. Watch this. Esther chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And Memukan answered before the king and the princess, verse the queen, has not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king of Osiris. He says, listen, because this is my new can now. So listen, what the queen, what Queen Vesti has done is not only just affect, it's not only an insult to the king, but it's an insult to all the men of Persia. You understand? Go ahead. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, Meaning what Vesti has done, the women of Persia, they are going to start to disrespect their husbands as well. Because if the queen can do it, that means it's okay for them to do it. Go ahead. So that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. You see that thing? They're going to disrespect their husbands because if the queen can do it, that means that now the women have been given carte blanche to disrespect the king as well, to disrespect their own husbands. Okay, go ahead. When it shall be reported, the king of Osiris commanded Vesti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. She was still commanded, but she refused to come before the king. Go ahead. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, that shall there arise too much contempt and rest. He says, because of what, what Vesti has done, guess what's going to happen? He says, thus shall there arise too much contempt and rare. From who? From the women. Because the women are going to start to disrespect their husbands. And when the husbands speak, they're going to say, but Vesti did it, and the queen didn't do nothing. So Memukan is advising the king of what he needs to do in order to restore order in Persia. And to restore, once order is restored in 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 the royal in the in, in the house of the in the royal house the rest of persia their houses they are also going to be in order you see that thing now watch this give me the book of ecclesiasticus real quick let me just touch on that okay give me Sarah chapter 10 read verse 1 watch this ecclesiasticus chapter 10 verse 1 go ahead a wise judge will instruct his people Mm -hmm. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. You see that part right there? And the, and the government of a prudent man, the prudent man is the wise man. The government of the wise man is well ordered. Okay, go ahead. As the judge of the people is, is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein that dwell in the city that is well ordered by the judge that is wise, that instructs his people. So now what Memukian is explaining is what we're reading here, that if you, if you don't order your house correctly, the rest of Persia, guess what? They are, we're not gonna have a say because our women are going to disrespect us if you don't check this woman. If you don't correct this, 
we are all going to be affected by this. You understand? That's what he's saying. So they understood order. They understood law. It's amazing when Israelites don't understand this thing and the Persians understood it. You can't make it up. Okay, let's go back. Esther chapter one. Esther chapter one. Um, read that verse again. Verse 18. Esther chapter one, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. Go ahead. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes. You notice it says, let it be written among the laws of Persia, of the Persians and the Medes. So they had laws. They had records, you understand, of laws to govern their kingdom. You see that thing? And the reason why it must be written is so that every king of Persia that is going to sit on the throne, they must make sure that they read that so that if anything similar happens, they must always refer to the law and say, you see, but according to our customs, we don't allow this thing to go down. You see that? That's why we also today, we have the Holy Bible because the Holy Bible records our history and it records how we must be well ordered according to the laws, statutes, and commandments that the Most High God gave unto us. Read. And let it be written among the laws of the patients and the Medes that mm -hmm. it be not altered, that Vesti come, come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Who oh, praises to the Most High? So the king of Persia didn't worship the Kuch. He did not. He understood that, I mean, he's the king. He can get any woman he wants. So that's why now Memukan is giving what he's giving the counsel of what he thinks the king should do. Watch this, verse 20, go ahead. And when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the mm. wives shall give to their husbands honor, both mm. great and small. You see that? It says, listen, it says, then if you do this, you look for a woman that is better than Vashti, this demonic Jezebel, is a listen, all is as all the wives shall give their husbands honor both to great and small, meaning those that had high positions and those that had low positions, their wives are going to reverence and respect them. You see how they was thinking? So when we try to do it, the people in the world they say no. The women, the Israelites, you know, the Israelite men, they are always about the law. They oppress the women. We don't oppress the sisters. How do we oppress the sisters? We apply the laws of God. And if the sister understands her role, she's going to find joy in submitting herself to her husband or the leadership as a daughter to make sure that what she understands what is written. But when we do it, because feminism is running rampant in the black community, when we do it, they say we are sexist. Yeah, we are paid. They say well, we, are, we are sexist. You understand? We are domineering and all that. But we are the head of the nation of Islam. We are the leaders. We are the kings. Okay? So we are not going to shy away from that. Go ahead. And the same pleased the king and the princes. And the mm -hmm. king did according to the word of Memukin. Memukin. So Memukin gave the king advice, the wise men. You know, that was his counselors. He's like, okay, I agree with this. I'm happy with this. The mission is a goal. Let's do it. Go ahead. Watch this. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house. What did he say? That every man should bear rule in his own house. That every man should bear rule in his own house. That's the order, that's the law. I know some of you men are scared. Don't be scared, brothers. You understand? The Bible will back you up. You sisters must be okay with this and be happy with it, okay? That every man should bear rule in his own house. Okay, go ahead. And that it should be published according to the language of every people. All the people that was in Persia, so that every man must bear rule in his own house so that the empire of the Persians is in order. You see what they did? Give me that in 1 Timothy 3, verse 5. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. First 
First Timothy chapter three, verse five. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that thing? If you don't know how to rule your own physical house, your own spiritual house, you will not be able to take care of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? So whether you are married, whether you are unmarried, if you are unmarried, you must be able to rule your own spiritual house well. Guess what? When you get married, you'll be able to rule your own physical house well because that goes into your wife, your children. Then you're going to be able to deal with the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that thing. Understand that thing. Okay? Now, Give me that in Esther 2, verse 5. Because what we're going over is, is what? We're going over that little fountain that became a river. Watch this. You see, the things are building up. The most High God had put the spirit in Persia so that Vashti the queen can be a demon so that they can create an opening for what the most High God wants to do. Now read that. Esther 2, verse 5. Come on. Esther chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamin. Go ahead. Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. So now Jeconiah is Jeconiah's, which is Jachin. Go ahead. And he brought up Hadessa, that is Esther, his mm -hmm. uncle's daughter. So our foremother Esther's name was Hadessa. Her name was Hadessa, okay, before they changed it in Persia because when the nation enslaved us, they enslaved us, they renamed us, they changed us. That's what they did. They enslave, you rename, you change. That's what they did to us. And so that's what's going on here. Read verse seven again. Esther chapter two, verse seven. And he brought up Hadessa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for mm -hmm. she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So now Mordecai, our forefather, became a father to our foremother Esther, Hadessa. Okay, go ahead. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shusha and the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. So Haggai was the keeper of the women. So now they are gathering all the women of Persia. They understand, like, you know what they do in the, these, these shows called The Bachelor and all that? That's what was going on right here. Now they're getting all these women and they are going to what? They're going to purify them and all that so that they can be ready for the king so the king can choose a wife, a queen, okay, read. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her, out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. So now our foremother, the Lord put the spirit upon her so that she can be well favored. She can obtain favor. You understand? The most I put the spirit on our foremother Esther for this reason. You understand? Read on. Go ahead. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Meaning what? He must not disclose to her kindred what was going on. Because they're going to go, they're going to what? They, they, they people talk. You understand? So he says, listen, let's contain this thing for now. You understand? Until such time that is, is the, the decree that the Most High God has put is going to come to pass. Okay, come on. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. You see that thing? She was, he's, he was making sure that, guess what? Because remember, Mordecai was her father. Okay. Mordecai was a father, so I'd be a father to the fatherless. That's what our forefather Mordecai did to our foremother, Hadessa. Okay? So that's why it says, and what should become of her? He needed to make sure that she's walking uprightly. She's doing as she was commanded by him. Read. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that, 
she had been 12 months according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, mm -hmm. six months with oil of myrrh and six mm -hmm. months with, with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. So now they are purifying themselves for 12 months straight, they are going to purify themselves. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 17 now. Watch this. Pay close attention. Okay, come on. Esther chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Now read verse 17 again. Okay, come on. Esther chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So now what's happening here is that our foremother Esther had Dessa. She says what? He says the king preferred her and she, he loved it more than all the women. Okay. So now our foremother queen es uh, Esther is now be made queen of Persia instead of the Jezebel Vesti. Okay? So now what's happening here, this is the pinnacle of what we read in Esther chapter 11. Okay? Where Esther, our foremother, is made the queen of Persia. Now watch this. Get, jump down to verse 20. Read verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. Meaning what? She obeyed her father. That's what our foremother Esther did. She obeyed her father. And that's why she was able to find favor with the who? With the, with, with the she was able to obtain favor from the king because the Lord put that spirit upon her because she was obedient. Understand that? Because I know some of you didn't pick that up. The reason why our foremother Esther were found herself in this position was because she obeyed her father, Mordecai. You understand? And the most that God was able to do what? To put that spirit that she may be able to ob obtain favor of the Lord because she obeyed her father and obtained favor with men. That's what, in this context, the king of Persia. Okay? Now watch this. Jump down, read verse 21 now. Come on. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bixen and Teresh, of those which kept the door were wrath and sought to lay hand on the king of Osiris. So now these two, uh, Big Than and Teresh, he says they what he says they sought to lay hands on the king of Osiris. They wanted to what? Did they, they wanted to bring harm to the king? Okay, read on. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Okay, come on. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So now what's happening here is um, when this thing, was, this thing was brought to the king at the mouth of our foremother Esther, you understand? And the king made inquisition because the king was not just going to um, go and hang these two. Inquisition needed to be made because remember what we read in Esther 1. It says they understood what? They understood uh, the times, law, and judgment. Okay? So they needed to do inquisition before. Now watch this. Give me the book of Esther 12 verse 1. Okay? Esther chapter 12 verse 1. Let's read that. Esther chapter 12 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Mordecai's took his rest in the court with Gabatha and Tara, the mm -hmm. two eunuchs of the king and keepers of the palace. So now these two were eunuchs. They were eunuchs. Okay, go ahead. And he heard their devices and searched out their purposes and learned that they were about to lay hands upon Artaxerxes the king. And so he certified the king of them. He certified the king of them. How did he do it? He spoke to our foremother, Queen Esther. The, our, our foremother, Esther, was able to make this, this information known to the king, hence the inquisition after that. Go ahead. 
Then the king examined the two eunuchs, and after that, they had confessed it, they were strangled. You see that thing? Meaning what? They were hanged, they were put to death because they confessed to it. Yes, we were going to do this thing. Okay, go ahead. And the king made a record of these things, and Mordecai also wrote thereof. Right. So the king commanded Mordecai to serve in the court, and for this he rewarded him. So now, after you know, hearing that Mordecai is the one that actually helped the king of Persia, you understand? From those two that wanted to what to put him to death, guess what? Our forefather Mordecai was promoted. He was he was given a reward. You understand? He, re he, re he, re he received favor of the king. Because imagine, let's say, I mean, you are at work and you're hearing wicked Negroes at work planning to assassinate your boss. Your boss might be an Edomite. Your boss might be a Persian. Your boss might be a Chinese and so forth. Guess what? <laughs> and you know, like they're actually planning to do this thing and something that you apply Leviticus 5 and 1. Because that's what our forefather Mordecai did here. He didn't keep quiet because the judgment that was going to come upon the king was also going to touch him as well. Understand that. Because if the king of Persia is killed, that means what's going to happen to our former Queen Esther. She might also be put to death. Mordecai, he might also be put to death. You see that thing? So our forefather Mordecai was a wise man. Understand that. Give me the book of Esther 3 verse 1. Okay. Esther chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. After these things, the king of Osiris promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Wait. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Well, Mordecai, our forefather, didn't, didn't bow down to Haman. Haman, who the king of Persia, he put him second in charge in Persia. Okay, come on. Remember, it says, after, th after these things did Ahasuerus promote. What things? The things we read in chapter 2, verse 21, down to verse 23. Okay. Yes, Mordecai was given reward. Haman also, remember, he was given what? He was given a good position in Persia. Okay. Because remember... When these nations are ruling, they all they are allied. They work together when they have people in captivity. The same thing that is happening today, you have uh, Esau as the superpower. Then the next thing, you the second pe the, the people that are next is who? Ishmael. Because that's how Esau is able to get oil from Saudi. That's why you see the Saudi prince, they are be running around with, with planes and helicopters and yachts and Ferraris and all that. Yes. Moab, you got Moab, you got Ammon and all that. These nations, they support America. Likewise, what was going on here, that is what was going on. Okay, read on. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was the Jew. So now the reason why this, uh, the reason why I'm going over this, I'm setting up, I'm painting a picture for what we're gonna read in a couple of somethings. So now I'm just painting a picture for you. We're gonna go backwards. Go ahead, verse five. Come on. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. So now the reason why he's angry, and remember it says Mordecai told them that he what he is a Jew. Give me that in um give me that in um um give me the book of Acts real quick. Okay. Give me Acts. You know what? Before you give me Acts, give me Revelation 19. Okay, this is the reason why our forefather Mordecai didn't bow the knee. You understand? We don't do it amongst each other. Why should we do it to the other nations? Watch this. Revelation chapter 19. Okay, read verse 10. Come on. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. 
worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see what he's saying? He says he what he wanted to fall and he wanted to fall at his feet to worship him. And he said, Listen, brother, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So this is against the law for us to do that, even amongst ourselves. You don't bow down. That's why when some brothers, you know, they're bugged out, they come to camp, they say, No, pray for me and all that. They be kneeling, we'll be telling them, No, brother, get up, don't be doing that. Because why? Because with it's written in the scripts. So here, our forefather Mordecai said, I'm not going to bow down to you because I'm a Jew. It's against my laws. It's against the laws of my God to bow down to you. Okay? Go back to Esther, chapter 3. Read verse 5 now, again. The book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 5. And when mm -hmm. Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. So Haman was mad as hell. He was upset. Go ahead. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So now I'm setting it up for you. Okay, right now what we're reading here. Now, watch this. Hmm. Give me, give me, give me the book of Esther. Okay, give me Esther. Esther 2 verse 17. Esther 2 verse 17. I'm going to go backwards a little bit. Get Esther 2 verse 17. Read that for me. The book of Esther chapter 2 verse 17. Go ahead. And the king loved Esther above all the women. Mm -hmm. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made a queen instead of Vashti. Now give me Esther chapter 11. Esther chapter 11 and verse 10. The book of Esther chapter 11 verses 10. Mm -hmm. Then they cried unto God, and upon their cry, as it were from a little fountain, was made a great flood, even much water. So now when it says this little fountain, which was made a great flood, is because what? Because our foremother Esther was made queen of Persia. That's why it says um, the little fountain um, was made a great flood, even much water, because now the Mosaic God had put our foremother in the position where she had power to what? To make, um, to make, it, to have influence. She had influence in Persia, okay? And because of that, she would be able to what? To make executive decision at the, at the, at the, at the permission of the king, you understand? And we're gonna read that later on in the chapter as, as, as we're going over this lesson. Now watch this. Give me the book of Esther now, chapter, give me Esther chapter 10. Give me Esther 10 and verse six. Give me Esther 10 verse six. The book of Esther chapter 10 verse six. Mm -hmm. A little fountain became a river. Wait. And there was light, and the sun, and much water. This river is Esther, whom the this king married. Book. This river is Esther, whom the king this married. River, this river is Esther. This river is Esther. This river is Esther. Go ahead. Whom the king married and made queen. You see that thing? This, uh, this river is Esther, whom the king married and made queen. So that little river that became a fountain is talking about our foremother Esther when the king married and made a queen of Persia. So that's what it means when it says the little fountain became a, became a great flood. Why? Because our foremother Esther, she was quote unquote nobody in Persia. You understand? Until the Lord put the spirit on Vesti the queen to become a demon and then there was an opening. So she, what, she moved up the ranks she became the queen of Persia. That's what that means. That's why this is, that's why I'm going over this. Now watch this. Now go back. Give me the book of Esther chapter 11. Read verse 6 now. Esther 11 verse 6. Read that. The book of Esther chapter 11 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And behold, two great dragons came forth ready to fight. Mm -hmm. And their cry was great. And their cry was great. Go ahead. 
And at their cry, all nations were prepared to battle that they might fight against the righteous people. Great. And lo, a day of darkness and obscurity, tribulation and anguish, affliction and great uproar upon the earth. Great. And the whole righteous nation was troubled, fearing their own evils and were ready to perish. So now what we're going over here, what we're what we gonna go over, we're gonna go over uh, the two great dragons, who the two great dragons are, you understand? And guess what? Though they are, they are gonna be ready to fight and their cry is gonna be great, meaning what? The noise of their conflict will be perpetrated throughout all Persia. That's what this is going into. Now give me the book of Esther now. Read Esther chapter three, read verse one. Esther three verse one. We read it earlier on, but I'm gonna read it again now. Watch this. Come on. The book of Esther chapter three verse one. Mm -hmm. After these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamedath, Hamedatha the Agikite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Remember, at this point, our foremother, Hadassah, she is the queen of Persia, okay? She is the queen of Persia because at the command and, and counsel of our forefather, Mordecai. Now, what happened was the two eunuchs, they plotted to kill the king, to slay the king, to lay hands on the king, and our foremother, the Lord, their forefather, Lord put the spirit upon our forefather, Mordecai, to, what, to find out what their plan was. And he brought the matter to the king through our foremother, Hadassah, the queen of Persia, okay? So now at this point, the matter has been brought to the king and the two eunuchs have been strangled or hanged, okay? Now in process of time, this takes place. Read verse one again, once more again, okay, come on. The book of, the book of Esther chapter three, verse one. After these mm -hmm. things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamedatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Great. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king Great. had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Because the king gave him power because he was second in command in Persia. He was second in command. So now all the people, they were bowing down unto who? Haman, right? Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Why are you, transgress why are you, why are you going against the king's commandment? What, is the, what, is the, what was the king's commandment? He wanted people to bow down to, to, to Haman, but our forefather Mordecai did not. Go ahead. Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a, that he was a Jew. That's what we read in Revelation 19, verse 10. Come on. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then Haman, full of wrath. Then so Haman was, was Haman. Full of wrath. Haman was full of wrath. He was angry. He was upset because our forefather Mordecai didn't bow down to him. But keep reading. Watch this. Come on, verse 6. The book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And they thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So meaning indeed the people of Mordecai. So because our forefather Mordecai didn't bow the knee to, the, to Haman, Haman was like, because of, because of what this guy is doing, you know, or what he is not doing, he says, guess what? I'm going to destroy all the people of Mordecai because of what Mordecai don't want to do. He doesn't want to bow down the knee unto me. So now, but you have to ask yourself, why would why would Haman have so much hatred? But I mean, he was triggered. He was triggered so much so that he was saying, listen, because of what you don't want to do, because of your disrespect, quote unquote, I'm going to make sure that everybody that is connected to you 
is put to death because of what you don't want to do. Now watch this. You might be asking, why? Hmm. Let's back up. Who's Haman? Give me that in 1 Samuel, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. Let's read that. Who's Haman? He says, Haman the Agagite. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. Let's read that. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verses 2. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. So when we came out of Egypt, Amalek lay wait for us. You understand? Hold this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 25. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 25 verse 17. We're going to read down. Okay. Let's read that. Let's get some accounts here. Okay. Come on. Because here the most High God is recounting, is recalling the history of what happened when we came out of Egypt in the wilderness. Or in our, uh, not in the wilderness, but when we came out of Egypt, when we walked, you understand, to what? To the Gaza Strip. Okay. Come on. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you were gone forth out of Egypt. This is during the Exodus. When we came out, this is what Amalek did. Read on. How he made thee by the way and smote the hand most of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. You see, meaning they didn't fear God, meaning Amalek don't fear God. So they came behind us, you understand? They, they went after the vulnerable. That goes into us. The feeble behind me, that goes into the kids, that goes into the old men and the old women, the grannies and the grandpas. So they targeted those. Okay, come on. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God hath given the rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord, the God, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, you shall, this is future prophecy. He says, when you are in the land, you understand? Once you are in the land, guess what? Don't, don't forget what Amalek did unto you. Don't forget and the reminder was what we just read in 1 Samuel 15, which our forefathers Saul forgot. He didn't remember. That's where the Lord was mad. Okay? So let's go back. 1 Samuel 15, read verse 2 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. That saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Come down to verse 5. Come on. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. So he came to the city of Amalek, right? Go ahead. Jump down to verse 8 now. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 8. And he took Akag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and you utterly he destroyed. He says he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag, the king of the Amalekites. So Haman was an Agagite. So what was Haman? Haman comes out of the lineage of Agag. So who's Haman? Haman is Amalek. Haman is Amalek. Okay. Read that again, verse 8. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Uh -huh and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. So he took Agag, the Amalekite, the king of the Amalekite, he took him alive, he didn't put him to death. You understand? When the Lord says, go and smite Amalek, destroy them all and everything they own too. So our forefather Saul didn't do that thing. Now watch this. Give me Ezekiel chapter 35. Ezekiel chapter 35. We're going to read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. In the time that their iniquity had an end. So it says, Esau, Edom, Idumia, it says they have a perpetual hatred 
against us. You understand? An ongoing hatred. I'm going to show you how deep that goes. Remember, during the time of Ezekiel is during the time of who? Babylon. This is during the time of Babylon. The Persia has not taken over. It's during the time of Babylon. Jump down to verse 11, okay? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 11. Therefore, mm -hmm. as I live, saith the Lord God, I will, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou mm. hast used out of thy hatred against thee. You see and that? I will make... So the Lord says, hold on, the Lord says, because of they have a perpetual hatred against us, and during the time when um, our calamity had an end, they did not. What did they do? I mean, when Nebuchadnezzar came against us, when we were running away, they helped Nebuchadnezzar to overthrow us. You understand? They were the ones that was blocking the way when the Chaldeans set Jerusalem on fire. So the Lord is saying, because of this hatred that you've got, the Mosaic God says, I'm going to destroy you according to the anger that you have against my people, the envy that you have, and the hatred that you have against them. Go ahead. And thou Come shalt on. know that I am no, the no. Lord. No, no, no. And I will make what? Excuse me, sir. The last, part of the, the last part of that verse, the last part of verse 11, and I will make myself known unto them. You understand? When I have judged thee. Okay? So what the Lord is saying here in Ezekiel, he said, listen, these people, they have an ongoing hatred against you. That's what you are seeing today. You look at Amalek, the Jewish people in our land today, they have an ongoing hatred against us. They are the ones that control the media. They are the ones that control the music industry. You understand? They, they control the banks. They broadcast, uh, you know, these broadcast... Um, institutions and so forth they are the ones that give young black men money to do what to push out garbage lyrical content that promote violence that promote promiscuity that promote prostitution that promotes rape and murder and the shedding of blood and going to jail they promote stealing they promote robbing they promote gangbang that's what they do who's behind this amalek is behind this jewish people they are the ones that give these young rappers money to do what? To push garbage out. Not just the rappers, but the R&B singers as well, the gospel singers as well. Because they all, none of them, they are not, they are not glorifying the Lord. These gospel singers. We see a lot of scandals about them. Who's funding them? Amalek is funding them. You understand? So that's the envy, anger, and the hatred they have against us. So Haman. He carrying the same evil demonic hatred that his forefathers had from the time of Esau when our forefather Jacob was given the blessing. He said what? He hated our forefather Jacob from that day until today. So that hatred was ongoing. That's why when we came out of Egypt, who came against us? Amalek, which is white people who call themselves Jewish today in our land. So the hatred has been ongoing from that time until now. And he's not going to stop until the Lord returns. You understand? So the reason why I'm, bring, I'm bringing this out is why. I'm showing you the reason why Haman was, was so angry and upset is because of the ongoing hatred from the time of Genesis unto this day. Understand that. Now give me Ezekiel 36 verse 5. Read that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. Come on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the Hebrew mm. and against all Idumia, which and are appointed, what? and against all Idumia. And against all Idumia, Edom, the so called white man, Esau, Edom, Idumia, against all Idumia. You understand? What did they do? Go ahead which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. You see that thing? They have appointed them to themselves God's land into their possession. When were they put in there? In 1948. Another land that they appointed to themselves was what? North America. Because that's when that's where the tribe of Gad, that's their land over there. You understand? They left during the time of Persia to go to another land where never mankind dwelt. When Christopher Columbus, during the age of discovery, they went over there, they say, oh, we discovered America, but they found people there already. You see that thing? So 
What do they do? Whatever land that the Lord gives us, Esau, Edom, Idumia, they are always there wanting to take the land from us. Okay? Right? Because of that perpetual hatred. Right? Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. To cast it out for a prey. Because now they are preying upon the land. They push the media, they push garbage and lies in the media, saying, No, they are the people of the book. They are the Jews when they are not, but they are the synagogues of Satan. They are the house of Satan. So, what Haman's hatred comes from, I'm showing you where his hatred comes from. Okay, so let's go back. Go back now to um, Esther, Esther chapter 3. Let's go back there. Esther chapter 3, read verse 6 again. The book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout all the kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So now, the reason why he wanted to destroy all the Jews was, was not just because um, he didn't want to bow down. You understand? It was because of the, the deep level of hatred that he has from the, from what? From his forefathers. So now what you are seeing here, I mean, it's a small thing, but just guess what? It just blew up. You see that thing? Watch this. Go back to the prophecy. Go back to Esther chapter 11. I'm going to show you that. Esther 11 verse 6 again. Watch this. The book of Esther chapter 11 verse 6. And behold, two great dragons came forth ready to fight, and their cry was great. You see that part right there? And their cry was great. Their cry was great. Remember, it's talking about who? It goes into our forefather Mordecai and Haman. They are the dragon. They are the two dragons that were ready to fight, and their cry was great. Now we're going we're gonna to see the cry that Haman made you understand? That became great. What was the cry that became great that Haman made? Because why? Our forefather Mordecai didn't bow down to him. Now watch this. Now let's go back. Esther chapter 3, read verse 8 now. We're going to see the cry that one of the dragons made that perpetrated throughout all Persia for the destruction of our forefathers. Okay? Read that. Esther chapter 3, read verse 8. The book of Esther chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither mm -hmm. keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer. So now Haman, what is he doing? He is slandering us now. He's slandering all 12 tribes because of what? Because our forefather Mordecai, what he did not do. And was he justified in not going down to Haman? Yes, because it's written in the law. Okay, come on. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it to the king's treasuries. So now we say, listen, I'm going to pay you money. I'm willing to pay you top dollar to make sure that these people, they disappear. You understand? That's what he's saying. Because remember, and the reason why the king believes Haman is because of what? He's the second in charge. So obviously the assumption is he must done, he must done some research because he's trusted in patient. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Esther chapter 3 verse 10. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto him, and the son of Hamed Datha, and the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. You see what he's saying? He says, the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto him, and the son of Hamedatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. How is he a Jew's enemy? We read in Ezekiel 35. We read in Ezekiel 36. We read it in Deuteronomy 25 and 17 down. Because they are what? They have a perpetual hatred against us, an ongoing hatred from the time of Genesis 27, verse 41 through 42, 
all the way up to today. It goes back all the way to Genesis, the fourth chapter, Genesis, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. The same thing has been ongoing from the time of Genesis until this day. So what you are seeing here is escalating the situation. That's why it says he made a great cry. Okay. This is the cry that we're reading about that Haman made. Read. And the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Now he's even giving him people to help him to what? To make sure that these people that are causing problems in his kingdom, they all must be wiped out. Go ahead. Then were the king's scribes called unto the thirteenth day of the first month, and they was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the king's governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. So now they put, a, they, they put a, the seal of a king upon it so that everybody knows that this thing is a valid decree that must go out against all the people of the Jews that do what? Because they have laws that are contrary to everybody in Persia. And they are not according to, they are not, they are not for the betterment of the, of the, of the empire. That's what he's telling uh, the king here. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, mm. and to cause mm. perish all Jews, both young and, and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Ata, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. You see that thing? Look at the words that are being used here. It says, in all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women. Isn't the same thing that we read about in Deuteronomy 28, verse 49 to verse 50? It's the same thing. You understand? They didn't mean it. They did not reverence the old men. They did not reverence the children or the women. Their job was to kill and destroy and to overthrow and to colonize and to conquer and to rename us and to enslave us. That's the mindset of all these, especially Esau. Because of what? Because of it, because of Genesis 27, uh, when our forefather Isaac gave our forefather Jacob the blessing. Okay, now watch this. Now, give me the book of Esther chapter 13. Let's read, because remember now, he told the king what he wanted to do, and the king assisted him with people to help him to do this thing. Now, the letters, the letters, the letters were sent by posts. Okay, now we're going to read the content of the letter. Now the king is going to remember, it says the king sealed it with his ring, meaning the king's signet, just like uh, what Jezebel did. What Jezebel did, he used the, he forged, um, he, he wrote letters in Ahab's name. That's what's going on here. Haman is doing the same thing. Given that in um, Esther chapter 13, read verse, read verse one, Esther 13 verse one. Okay, come on. The book of Esther chapter 13 verse one. The copy of the letters was this. The great king at Xerxes writeth these things to the princes and governors that are under him from India unto Ethiopia in 107 and 20 provinces. So now at Xerxes, remember, this is the letter. Uh, at, uh, king at Xerxes is now approved this letter to go out, to kill, to destroy, and to wipe out the Jews. Go ahead. After that, I became Lord over many nations and a dominion over the whole world, not lifted up with presumption of my authority, but carrying myself always with equity and mildness. I purposed to settle my subjects continually in a quiet life and mm -hmm. making my kingdom peaceable and open for passage to the utmost coast to the renewed peace which is desired of all men. So now you see the mindset of the king of Persia. He said, listen, me, I want peace in my kingdom. So obviously he's writing this because he was told that there are certain people 
that are causing problems in your kingdom. So he's writing this based on that knowledge that Haman gave unto him, which was false. You understand? Haman had a personal matter, and he used the king of Persia to do what? To, a, to, a, to destroy the Jews. So he exploited his position, and he exploited the king of Persia's position in order to abuse us. You see that thing? Go ahead. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amen, that, ex that excelled in wisdom among, among us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom. So he was second. He was second to the king. You understand? So he had a lot of, he was able to whisper a lot of things to the king of Persia. You understand? Go ahead, go ahead, come on. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the whole world, there were scattered a certain malicious people that had that laws. So now, now they are saying we are a malicious people. We are malicious. So that's the same thing they are saying about us today. You understand? We are a hate group. We teach hate. We're not teaching love. We hear that from the, 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 the other nations. You understand? Edomites, Elamites, Ishmaelites, Moabites, you understand? Ammonites, Hamites. We hear this, not only that, but we hear this from our own brothers and sisters, the Israelites, the so-called blacks and bantus on this side of the earth. We hear the same thing from them as well. You understand? So they are slandering us. So they are in a hidden state of mind, pushing hidden customs and doctrines and philosophies and hatred towards their own people. Go ahead. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world, there was a scat there was scattered a certain malicious people that had mm -hmm. laws contrary to all nations yeah. and continually despised the commandment of kings. Mm -hmm. So as the uniting of our kingdom honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. Is there, because these certain malicious peoples that are scattered all over the earth, they are causing problems wherever they are scattered. That's the same thing that happened back then and what's happening today. Because remember, you must understand, think about it like this, right? Yes, we read about 70 AD, you understand, in Luke 21, verse 20, 20 verse down, 2 verse 24, when uh, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed, and we ran deeper into the continent of Africa. That wasn't the first time when we ran deeper into the continent. You understand? There were times, there were during the time of um, uh, Babylon, guess what? When we we're being persecuted by the Babylonians, where did we run to? Where did we run to? We ran into Africa. When we were persecuted by the Assyrians, what do you think many of our forefathers did? They ran into the continent. They set up kin, they set up, they started to mingle with the heathens, the Hamites, you understand? And they've been there ever since. So don't think, Uri, we started to mingle with the Hamites now in 70, after 70 AD. No. Whenever we were persecuted, we ran into Africa and we were hiding. We mingled ourselves among the Hamites. And we set up, we set up families. We set up kingdoms and all that. So in 70 AD, when we ran deeper into the continent, we ran to our forefathers that we knew went in Egypt deeper into the continent of Africa already, way before that. BC, not AD, BC. We knew that because we always kept records. You understand? So this is for you brothers that teach on the streets. Keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now read right. verse 5 now, again. Come on. The book of Esther, chapter 18, verse 5. Read. Seeing, seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, differing in the strange manner of their laws, mm -hmm. and evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can, that our kingdom may not be firmly established. You see what he's saying, Haman? He says, our kingdom. So in his mind, the kingdom of Persia also belongs to him. You see that thing? That is mindset. Okay, come on. That's why now white people, these Edomites, now during the, in, in the 1600s when they came over here, 
Jan van Riebeek and all that, Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz and so forth. They think now South Africa is their country when it's not. That's the mindset that Heyman has. That's, the, that's his forefathers also, you know, his children that came after him, which is the Buddhas, the, the Portuguese, the Spaniards, the Dutch, the French and the British, the Americans, the Europeans, they are all, they all think the same way. You see that thing? Go ahead. Verse six. Therefore have we commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Haman, who is ordained over their face and is next to and is next unto us, shall all with their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies, without mm. all mercy and pity. The 14th day of the 12th month, Ada, of this present year. God, you see that thing? So remember, this was going on here. This is a process in the process of time. Remember, he had a dream when in the month Nisan. Now, 11 months has gone by. This is the 12th month now in the month Ada. Go ahead. I'm going to show you something what we read in uh, First Samuel. I'm going to show you what we read in. Um, um, Hey, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17 down. I'm going to show you something with this verse. Read verse 7 again. The book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 7. That they who of old and now also are malicious. Stop may right in you, you see that part right there? It says that they who of old, meaning back in the day, generations before. Now who of old and now. Meaning these people, that means Haman knew our history. You understand? That's why he says, who of old and now. He's going back to the previous generations before us, before the current generation during the time of Persia. So he's referring back to Egypt, Assyria, you understand? Babylon. Then now we are in Persia. That's why he's of old and now, and now, and now. Okay, come on. That they of old and now also are malicious. Mm. May in one day with violence go into the grave. And so ever hereafter cause our affairs to be well settled and without trouble. You see that thing? So the nations basically, what the nations want is to wipe us out. That's what the nations want. The mindset that, um, that Haman has here who is Amalek, the Jewish people, those imposters in our land calling themselves Jewish, that's how they think. They wish that we can be wiped out. But whatever the, 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 the Balfour Declaration of 1917, which was ordained, you understand, the wish came to pass in 1948, is going to fall because that's a lie. They stole our identity and they are living in a land that don't belong to them, including the Palestinians as well, because they don't belong in that land. That's our land. When you read the book of Joel, three verse three down. Okay, now watch this. Now you see what's going on here. Haman made a huge cry. So now the letters are sent all over Persia so that our forefathers in the 127 provinces can be marked for death, including their wives and their children. Their houses broken into and destroyed. You see that thing? So now watch this. In light of this, Give me the book of Esther. Okay, give me Esther 4. Give me Esther 4 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Esther, chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his cloth and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a, with a loud and a bitter cry. Now read verse 1 again. I need you men to pick up things here. Okay? Remember what we read in Esther chapter 11. Okay? Now read that verse again. The book of Esther chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. You see what he did is as and he cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Because what we read in the prophecy, you understand, in the dream that Mordecai our forefather had, that's the same wording that was used. Now this is the cry that our forefather Mordecai is gonna make. 
Hold this. Go back to Esther. Give me Esther now. Esther 10. Esther chapter 10 and verse 7. Watch this. The book of Esther chapter 10 verse 7. And the two dragons are I and him and Amen. And, says that, and the true dragons, the true dragons are I and him. So these two dragons making reference to our forefather Mordecai and that's deemed that demon Jewish Amalekite Haman. Okay. Haman made a cry. He went to the king of Persia. You understand? He says, I'm going to pay you to get to make sure that all the 127 provinces that you are ruling over, the, 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 the Jews must be marked for death. Now, our forefather is making a cry also, okay, to the Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth. And this is what the Lord, that this is what the Mosai will put on this, the put in the spirit of our forefather Mordecai on what to do. Go back to Esther 4 now. Read verse 1 again. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 1. Great. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Come on. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. Because now he was in a state of mourning. Go ahead. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, mm -hmm. and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. You see that thing? Now they went out a decree, listen, we need to fast. We need to fast and prepare for war. You understand? We need to fast and prepare for war. Haman is preparing for war, which is one of the dragon, and our forefather Mordecai is also preparing for war by calling on the Lord of heaven and earth with fasting and putting on sackcloth, humbling themselves with weeping and wailing that the Lord may be able to what? Have mercy upon them. Whenever our forefather, whenever we were faced with a problem, this is what we did. There's always been the solution. There's always been the formula. You understand? And it worked 100% all the time. Understand? Go ahead. The book of Esther That's four. Over four. So Esther's maids and a chamberlain came and told it to, and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiments to clothe Mordecai, to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Wait, meaning what? He was like, no, 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 no. I need to do this. Go ahead. Then called Esther for her tuck. One of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon him, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So now he said, listen, okay, I'm going to send one of the king's chamberlains to come and talk to my father. Go ahead. The book of Esther, chapter 5, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse, no, four, verse 6. Read. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai and to the street of the city which was before the king's gate. Mm -hmm. And Mordecai told them of, and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. So now are, our forefather Mordecai is explaining what's going on to our, forefather, to our foremother Esther. Go ahead. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people. So, so now, so now what, what was going on here is that our forefather is telling our, for, our, our former the Queen Esther, said, listen, this is what's going on. And I want you to take this, go and speak to the king on our behalf for the, for the sake of your nation. This is what you must do now in order for you to what? To help us so we may be delivered from this evil that Haman has planned and plotted against us. Go ahead. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Great. Again, Esther spake unto Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. Read. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces 
to know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death. You see Except that? Such so the law was, if somebody come to the inner court where the king was and you were not called or requested of the king, the commandment of Persia was that they must be put to death. So now our former Esther is letting a tag know to let Mordecai know. So listen, I will not be able to do this because of this. Okay, come on. Except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in, in unto the king these 30 days. He says, I have not been called for into the, to come into the king for, these, for 30 days. Go ahead. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Mm -hmm. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So now she's been, now Mordecai is checking. I said, listen, don't think, he says, don't think that when you are going to escape, you understand? In the, because you are, you are the queen more than all the Jews. That's what, she, that's what he's telling you, listen. Because when you, when, you examine our, 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 when you examine our people today, you've got many of our sisters in, in power today. They've been given, they've got a lot of influence, you understand? They have a lot of influence in the media. They have a lot of influence in the celebrity cycles and all that, in government and all that. But they are doing nothing for their people. You understand? Excuse me. Look at people like Basesta and Akumar. What are they doing for the community? Nothing. Except they are exploiting their community by pushing out this, um, by pushing out TV shows that exploit our people. What are they doing for the nation? Nothing. You understand? Look at Boo. What is this woman? I think she's the owner of some, some football, some football uh, uh, club, right? What, what's her name? Mom Kizu, sir. Mom Kizu. What, what is she doing for the community? Nothing. All she's doing is that she's been rocking Gucci and Bentleys and Rolls Royce and all that. But what is she doing for the, for the nation? Nothing. You see that thing? They just flaws. They just flaunt. You understand? They are flossing and flaunting to our people or whatever they've got money. They are not a benefit to the nation at all. Look at people like Oprah. You understand? What are they doing for their people? You see all these billions that they have, you know the amount of good they can do for their community, but they are doing it not. So that's the same mindset that our foremother Queen Esther had here at this point. That's why our forefather Mordecai had to check and say, listen, don't think you're gonna survive when destruction comes because you are the queen. Okay, go ahead. Verse 14, watch this. The book of Esther chapter four verse 14. For mm -hmm. if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall they enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. You see what it says? But deliverance will come from somewhere else if you don't change your mind. If you're still sticking to what you said telling me, guess what? Deliverance will come from somewhere else for the people, for the nation of Israel. Go ahead. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You see what she, you see what he's telling you? He said, listen, the reason why you were made the queen of Persia was because for we was what the reason for it was such a time like this, where you can be able to what to use your position of influence to be able to deliver and help your people, be a benefit to your nation. Because she didn't see it like that. Now he's telling her, listen. You just don't know that the reason why you are the queen is because of a, such a time as this. That's the same mindset that our for our, our foremothers, like the same mindset that our sisters must have in the world, but they don't have that mindset. In fact, they look down on their own people. They disrespect their fathers and their mothers and their grandmothers and their, their grandfathers. That's what they do. You hear the stories on the news. You understand? So now she's been checked here. So likewise, you sisters, I'll give, I, I'm going to paint a picture like this. Some of you, a lot of you, you sisters, obviously, the white man is creating environment and, and, and is creating environment and a condition 
to favor you. That's why I see a lot today. Black women, they are getting, they are, they are paying, they are getting paid higher than the black men. So instead of actually seeing that, putting, put, you understand, understanding that the reason why this is so is so that you can be a help and a benefit to your nation. Instead, what our sisters do, they look down on the black men. They look down on their fathers. They look down on their brothers. You understand? They disrespect their fathers. The, the, the women that are, are, are married, they disrespect their husbands because they are any more than them. They no longer submit to them. They say, no, but I earn more than you, so I wear pants in the house. I make the final decisions in the house. That's not biblical. That is not biblical. Understand that. The classic example is what we're reading here. Go ahead. Verse 15. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 15. Then mm -hmm. Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Now she got her spirit right. She got her mind right. He said, listen, you see what she did? He says, go and says, fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, three days, night or day. He says, I also and my beings will fast likewise. He said, listen, we're going to fast for three days. Uh, fast for me out there. And I'm going to fast inside here with my maidens. You understand? Then I'm going to go and speak to the king. If I die, I die. She got her mind right. She got her mind right. Because her, because her father, Mordecai, was a revolutionary man. She became revolutionary right here. You brothers and sisters see that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. I yes, hope sir. you can see that thing. Okay, I hope you can see that thing. Go ahead. Verse 17. Come on. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. You see that thing? So he, he decided, okay, now she got her mind right. We all going to get ourselves together. We're going to fast. Afflict our souls because we're preparing for war. That's the great cry that our forefather Mordecai did. You understand? Haman made his cry. Our forefather Mordecai made even a bigger and a better cry. Why? Because everybody was against us in Persia because of what Haman, this Amalekite, this Jewish, this Jewish demon did. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, give me the Esther 5 and 1. Okay, I'm going to fast forward now quickly. Esther 5 and 1. The book of Esther chapter 5 verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on a royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. So now our foremother Esther, she now wants to go and speak to the king. You understand? That's why it says, if I die, I die. Okay, now watch this. Jump down to verse 7, because what she did is that um, she, she set up, she set Haman up. She set him up. Okay? Um, you know what? Read verse 3. The book of Esther, chapter 5, verse 3. Then said the king unto her, what wilt thou, king, queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall even, it shall be even given thee to the behalf of the kingdom. To the half of the kingdom. Come on, it says, what is your request? Okay, it shall be given the even half of the kingdom. Read. And Esther answered, if it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. So now the, our foremother Esther is setting him and up. Okay, go ahead. Then the king said, cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther had said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Wait. Then answered Esther and said, my petition and my request is, Come if on. I have found favor in the sight of the king, 
And if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them. And I will do tomorrow as the king had said. Mm -hmm. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. <laughs> Go ahead. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. Wait. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Wait. Haman said, moreover, yea, as to the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but myself. And tomorrow, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. So now he's telling his wife and the friends, he said, listen, I've been invited to the king's banquet at the command of Esther, and nobody else is invited but me. Okay? Now let's fast forward. Uh, Esther 7. Read Esther chapter 7, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Esther chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the, king said un, and the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given at my petition and my people at my request. Now he's saying, and my people at my request. Remember what Mordecai said to Esther. He said, listen, also, don't make yourself known to the king that you are what? You are a Jew. So at some point, she's going to reveal this thing. That's why it says, if I perish, I perish. Go ahead. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. Mm -hmm. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Right. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? Right. And Esther said, the adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. Mm. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. So now our foremother Esther, she's speaking now. The Lord has put the spirit upon her because she fasted for three days. Now it's time for the Lord to, to deliver them now. Go ahead. And the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther, the queen. For he saw that there was an evil determined against him by the king. Wait. Then the king returned out of his palace garden into the palace, into the place of the banquet wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? Mm. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Come on. And Habana, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. He says, Hang him, he says, Hang him on the 50 gallows cubits high. Hang him there, okay? Meaning kill him, put him, put this wicked Haman to death. Go ahead. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. The king's wrath was pacified. So now at this point, Haman is put to death. And you understand? And who got the victory? The Mosai got the victory. You understand? Because he put the spirit upon our forefather Mordecai and our foremother Esther. Okay? Now go back. Let's go back to Esther chapter 11. I'm almost done. Esther chapter 11. 
Okay. Esther chapter 11, read verse. Um, Esther chapter 11 and verse. Read verse 11. Esther 11 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Esther chapter 11 verse 11. Then mm -hmm. they cried unto God and upon their cry as it were from a no, little no, no. fountain. No, no, verse 11. Esther 11 verse 11. Read verse 11. Excuse me, sir. The book of Esther chapter 11 verse 11. The light and the sun rose up and the lowly was exalted and devoured the glorious. You see that thing? The glorious is who? Is Haman because he seemed like he was glorious, but he wasn't. He was a wicked Edomite. Okay? Now, Esther chapter 10 now, read verse 8. The book of Esther, chapter 10, verse 8. And the nations were those that were assembled to destroy the name of the Jews. Come on. And my nation is this Israel, which cried to God and was saved. Mm -hmm. For the Lord had saved his people, and the Lord had, de had delivered us from all those evils. And God had wrought signs and great wonders, which have not been done among the Gentiles. You see that thing? So now, because the Lord delivered us, you understand, from the hand of Haman and the patience that was influenced by the letter that Haman sent in the name of the king. So what we're reading here is that the Moses God delivered us from the hand of Haman and from those that were also prepared to do what Haman had said. Now watch this. Keep reading. Watch this. Therefore hath he made two lots, one for those people of God and another for all the Gentiles. He says, the, he says what? He says, therefore hath he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentile. That goes into the Persians. Read on. And these two lots came at the hour and time and day of judgment before God among all nations. Among all nations that was what? Was under the Persian Empire. Read on. So God remembered his people and justified his inheritance. Stop right there. Hold this. Give me the book of Esther now. Give me Esther chapter 9. Give me Esther chapter 9, verse 1. The book of Esther chapter 9, verses 1. Now in the 12th month, that is, the month Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. So now the most high God, he established us in Persia. He established us in Persia. And guess what? Many of the people in Persia, they became Jews. They converted to Judaism. They became Jews. They started to celebrate our customs and our feasts and our high days. You understand? The proof of that is Esther 8 verse 17. Read that. The book of Esther chapter 8 verse 17 in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. That why it says he made what? He made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. That's the prophecy. That's what we read in Esther chapter 10. So what we're reading in Esther 8 is the what? He's explaining what we read in Esther chapter 8, chapter 10, and verse 10. Now go back to Esther 9. Read verse 2 now. Come on. The book of Esther chapter 9, verse 2. The Jews mm -hmm. gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such, to lay hand on such as sought they hurt. And no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all the people. You see, the fear, our, the fear of, of them fell upon all the people because the Lord was with us. So those that were determined to destroy us, guess what? They were put to death. You understand? So now that's why it says many of the people became Jews because for the fear of the Jews fell upon them because they knew the Lord was with us. Jump down to verse 5. The book of Esther chapter 9 verse 5. 
Mm -hmm. Thus the Jews smote all the enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them. You see that thing? Now jump down to verse, read verse 11. The book of Esther chapter 9, verse 11. On mm -hmm. that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace was brought before the king. Come on. And the king said unto Esther the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan the palace and 10 sons of Haman. What have, they, what have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. Oh, what is thy request further? And it shall be done. Great. Then said Esther, if it please the king, it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow according unto this day's no, decree. No, 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 no. No, no. It says, then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews unto this day's decree. It says, then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree. You see that thing? So when it says also, meaning what? The 13th day that we have decreed, we must do also unto the Jews that are in Shushan on the day after. That's why it says the 13th day, the 14th day, and the 15th day. That's why it says also. Okay, come on. Uh, excuse me, sir. The book of Esther chapter 9 verse 13. Then said Esther, if it please the king, that it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto, the day, unto this day's decree, and that Haman's mm -hmm. ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. Read on. And the king commanded it to be done. And the decree was given in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's, Haman's ten sons. Not only did they hang the father, they hanged the sons as well. Go ahead. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the 14th day also of the month Adar, and mm -hmm. slew 300 men in Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. Meaning on the innocent, they did not lay no hand upon them. So now what you are seeing here says, the day that Haman decreed that he was going to destroy us, that's the day that they ordained. Not only that, but the second day also for the Jews that were at Shushan, they also added that day as the what? The 14th day as well. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And the king's commandment is to be done. And the decree was given in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. Great. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the 14th day, also of the month of Dar, and slew 300 men in Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. Mm -hmm. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together, and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew of the foes seven and five thousand, but they laid not their hands on the prey. It says what? It says 70 and 5,000, meaning 75,000 of our enemies were put to death, but they laid not their hands on the prey. Go ahead, watch this. Read. On the 13th day of the month Adar, and on the 14th day of the same rested day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Because for each day they were putting our enemy, we were putting our enemies to death. For the 13th day, the 14th day. Go ahead. But the Jews that were in Shushan assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day of the same they they of the same they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Come on. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the same month Ada a day of gladness and feasting and a good day, and of sending portions one to another. Okay, so the 14th day, they were sending gifts one to another. Go ahead. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in the provinces of the king, Ahasuerus, both nine and four. Read. To, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Ta and the 15th day of the same yearly of the same yearly, yearly, every year, to establish this among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same 
yearly. Go ahead. As the days were in the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. Read. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them. Come on. Because Haman, the son of Hamadath, the Agagite, and the enemy of all the Jews had devised against the Jews to destroy them and had cast poor, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. You see that thing? So poor means the lot. Poor, poor means the lot. You understand? It says he had devised against the Jews to destroy them and had cast poor, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. So now we used, um, we used the word, the, we used the, hmm, how do I call this? We used what Haman wanted to do against us, against him, and we created a feast out of it. You understand? Per means the lot. So now perim, you understand? Per means the lot. Perim means the lots. So, so the Lord became many lords. That's why we're celebrating it for three days. You understand? Go ahead. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Come on. Wherefore, they called these days Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen concerning this matter and which had come unto them. I want to show you something in verse 27. Come on. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they, sh that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to the appointed time every year. So now when it says the day after Marokia's day or Mordecai's day, so Mordecai's day will be the 13th day and the two days will be what will be extended to be called Purim for the Jews that were at Shushan and those that were what were in the villages in the unwalled, um, what do they call it? Unwalled towns, meaning in the villages. So you've got Mordecai's day, which is the 13th day, then you've got two days after, which is now called what? Purim. So all those three days are called Purim. When it says Mordecai's day going into the 13th day, then Purim is those last two days, which all those three days, they are called Purim. Okay, everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, keep reading. The book of Esther chapter 9, verse 28. And then mm -hmm. these days should be remembered and kept through every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that Come these on. days of Purim should not fail among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Jump down to verse 31 now. The book of Esther chapter 9 verses 31. To confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoyed them, and had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for the seed, the matters of fastings and their cry. You see, I think the matters of their fastings and their cry, because what we read in the dream, which is the prophecy of what was going to happen, we are reading about it here. So what happened was that that's why here says, according to Mordecai, the Jew and Esther, the queen had enjoined them. That them is what the days, Mordecai's day, and those two days, that's why now the feast is called the Feast of Purim, after the word per, that is the Lord. Now go back to Esther now, Esther chapter 11. Esther chapter 11, now read verse 12. The book of Esther, chapter 11, verse 12. Now when Mordecai, who had seen this, this dream, and what God had determined to do was awake, he bare the dream in mind. And until night, by all means, was desirous to know it. 
now we know what the dream meant. We know who the dragons are. We know what the little fountain that became a river. Give me Esther 10 verse 13 now. The book of Esther chapter 10 verse 13. Therefore those days shall be unto them in the, in the month Adar, the 14th and the 15th of the same month with an assembly and joy and with gladness before God according to the generations forever among his people. You see that? So the days of Purim is two days, but they are joined with Mordecai's day. So you've got Mordecai's day, then you've got what? Those two days, which is what? That's why it goes into what? Uh, you see that in verse 13 when it says, therefore those days shall be unto them in the, in the month Adar, the 14th and the 15th day of the same month. Okay? So what we're reading here is, we get Mordecai's day, and there's those two days, according to what? Uh, Esther 9, verse 31, when it says, um, as Mordecai, the Jew, and Esther, the queen, had enjoined them. So those two days plus Mordecai's day goes into the Feast of Purim. Okay, so I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay, because I believe there is a, there is a class, the Feast of Purim, which was quite longer that we did, I think last year, uh, destruction of Nikan and the Feast of Purim. Uh, so, but it wasn't done this way. So today I wanted to focus on the interpretation of the dream in terms of prophecy. Get that in, uh, let's, let's break bread in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and say, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most our hand for that. All praises to the Lord.